welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a couple returning good brothers to the temple, previously behind FOE and... Um, Dames of Astoria, which I'm hoping to deep dive into early next year. The double-headed monster that is Dead Tree Studios, Zen and L. How are you guys to doing doing today? Or tonight, technically. I'm gonna cry now. It's all fine. <laughs> I'm not just a letter, man. <laughs> <laughs> no. no fine. <laughs> of course you're of course you're not a of course you're not a letter, man. You're not on late night. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was good. Okay, you know what? Yeah, that was nice. Was nice. Was the... yeah. Respect. I have I have my moments. So, obviously, the last time I brought you on was uh, was on um, Dames of Astoria, both in the mechanics end and then later on in the lore end. Um, and I did I did I have appreciated the um, lore videos that you guys have put up on the channel for things like some of the nations and. Most recently, some of the bestiary. Ah, you saw that was nice. Yeah, and then not too long ago, you guys ended up putting up a OST track for a project called Daughters of LAM. And Correct. Obviously, obviously, when it's because it sounded like you guys had something new you were you're cooking up, I figured that was as good a time as any to 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 bring you guys back on. So. Is so is Daughters of LAM is that the is that your guys' next tabletop RPG project or is it in a different medium? Yeah, it is a tabletop RPG project, and you can uh, you don't have to say LAM as well. You can just call it Lamb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and yes, it is actually. So where that came from is it is Dame's Light essentially. And so, when you say Dame's Light, are we are we talking? It's using, it's using similar mechanics, just not as cr just not as um, crunchy or customizable as Dame's was. Correct. Uh, I I I think I seen you had the uh, interview with Notepad Anna. Yeah. Yep. We actually sent our book uh, Dame's to him, and you know he did a whole review about it uh, when one of his cases. And you know we listened to all the you know feedback he did, and then as you know more people started like buying it and playing it, we got more feedback. Mm -hmm. And to change the Dame system at like now, uh, at least its uh, its bones of it would be unwise. <laughs> so uh, during one day when I was messing around with an AI generator. I just put in like nuns, and I actually saw a picture that generated that uh, is similar to the one I posted in the uh, chat there uh, before I got this commissioned. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Hmm, I think I'm working something right now." And I just had a thought, like, "What if I just run with this to give me motivation to actually take the feedback from people say on the Dame system and turn it into something a bit more compact for people?" Because apparently. Dames is a bit much for some. So I was like, all right, I'll cut it down a bit more and I'll put it into a different setting and see how it goes. And that will be Daughters of Lamb. Mm -hmm. Now, with the... Now, given given the aesthetic that you have here, do you consider th do you consider this to be essentially cyberpunk nuns? Uh, in layman's terms, yes. It would definitely be cyberpunk nuns. Mm -hmm. Um, the actual classification of it uh, would be uh, post cataclysmic. <laughs> yeah, and I've talked I've talked about it elsewhere. I've had my own unique history when it comes to discuss when it comes to discussions of cyberpunk, especially when everybody everybody thinks that you should be take you should be cribbing notes from the same sources from the nineteen eighties. Yes, like the actual story of Daughters of Lamb has nothing to really do with the quote-unquote corporations 
you're not really against quote unquote the man. You are quote unquote, you're nuns mm-hmm. uh, searching for lamb, uh, or at least his pieces. Um, which lamb in this case would be a, a super anti uh, super intelligent AI, which doing an event called the Blacklight, which was when all the uh, AIs went to war, mm-hmm. and it you know ended everyone it the war sent the world into chaos, hence the post cataclysmic event. Mm-hmm. And in doing so, Lamb survived. Just he's now in pieces because he used to be a satellite and he fell to the earth. The dogs of Lamb are quote, his followers, and they have to search the world to get him back. Uh, however, this is a more tame setting. So when we do this little project here, we're not going to be doing like the whole world as it is. You know what I'm saying? It's, it will be just a city because that's what would be the most current location a piece of Lamb has been found. And it'll be the story of your Abby and going through there. Mm-hmm. And given given that, I'm, assu- I'm assuming that the equivalent to class would pro- would probably be the Abby that your character comes from. And when you say class, you're not talking about like D and E class, or are you talking about actually like social status class? Um, more the former. I guess I should have used archetype. Gotcha. So the idea for this, like I said, is Dame's Light. So we're based on the Dame system. And if you don't remember, uh, just for a quick refresher, mm-hmm. um, Dames of Astoria didn't use a class system like normal D and D either. It had what we called the discipline system. Yeah. Where you would, you know, choose one at the beginning, like quote unquote normal classes, but you would get all the benefits of it up front. And at certain levels, uh, three, seven, and uh, uh, nine. nine. Yeah, sorry. Three, seven, and nine, you would get another one. And then you get like, hey, I'm a, I'm a warrior, uh, warrior, smith, artificer, uh, rune master, stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Or or uh, mage, thief, uh, ranger, archmage, stuff like that. That's how that usually works. Yeah. So if this one, you're, you'll you be the same. It'll be under discipline. So you just have different types of quote-unquote archetypes that you did come from before you or after you join the nunnery. You know, mm-hmm. soldier, prodigy, chanter, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. The Abbey itself is actually going to be a uh, gameplay mef- method that you and your party will be able to build up. Because you're, quote-unquote, just coming into uh, this city, which is called Gossamer. Mm-hmm. And you'll be building it up, getting more power, taking on missions, getting more prestige, money, etc. Mm-hmm. to eventually get to your piece of lamb, which is being held somewhere in the city. Yeah. Now, since we're since we are dealing with uh, one part- this one particular city, do you pl- do you plan on ha- do you plan on having it that within the book the city is its own ca- this its own character? Because with dames, obviously, you had a whole continent to work with, and here you just have this one um, city. Yes, it because it just has to be. Um, yeah, obviously. Um, and it's just going to be its own city. It's going to have its own factions, corporations, everything about the city, gangs, all that stuff in there. Uh, because this is where we want people to actually play it in. Um, and if we obviously if it gets popular enough, we'll expand to maybe more cities or maybe just expand Gosma. Who knows? But as of right now, yes, it will be its own thing. It will have its own people, own setting, all for, all for just that city. Mm-hmm. Like the obviously the first thing that comes to mind is how, is Night City and how it's really defined by the different themes with the districts. He, um, I remember Pond Smith talking about how he built how he built it using Sim using Sim City and was thinking of Night City like a theme park. I do find that kind of hilarious, but um, my initial. How do I explain it? My initial process of coming up with Gossamer, uh, hmm, wouldn't so much be like theme park, uh, as it were. More of uh, have you ever played Darkest Dungeon? Yes. The yeah. vid- the game of chicken in video game form. Yes. 
when we play a darkest dungeon, I thought was like, hmm, the idea of like the manner and everything that happens in between, which will be like the the sores, the the uh, sores, the manner, uh, the the blood court stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, not so much as a theme park that of my of me making it. You know, obviously, if you play it, you know, it's a different story. But of me making it, I was like, these are these exact uh, feelings I want you to go for when when exploring these sections and trying to you know deal with the gangs, the people, and the finding of lambs uh, parts while you're in the city. Because you're all you're trying to get the goal of you know actually getting lamb, and if you guys stay there after you do so, that's that's up to the party. But that is the overall goal of the. Uh, of the nuns. Mm -hmm. Now, since you brought up Darkest Dungeon, and I, I do want to... You, pr you were probably able to figure out why I made that joke, but for those unaware, the reason why I call Darkest Dungeon the video game equivalent of a game of chicken is when going it when going in with a, with a run, at any... Once you've finished an encounter, you can back off for the, you can back off for the day and collect and collect what you got, or keep going. It's always your choice, though. Which is what, but if you um, if you keep if you keep pushing it and things go and things go south, well, ultimately that was on you. You had the opportunity to back off. And since you brought up Darkest Dungeon, are you going to be going with a similar? approach if not if not as heavy on consequence where you're going out on the on the, for lack of a better term crusades <laughs> and Definitely go to the trust wards and um tr for a, for a specific goal but you all but the players always have the opportunity to um call it at, at qu call it or quit while they're ahead as it were yes that's uh, actually uh one of the reasons for uh, the abbey like i said it's going to be it's uh Thing they can build up because actually you know, like i said they just get there so they're perfectly new uh unless you know players say hey we want to start higher obviously um but yeah they're perfectly new and you know as they go through it's not going to be as uh dread filled as you know darkest dungeon obviously but i just use that as the the inspiration to how they would progress through this the city yeah. Uh, they they can pull back, obviously, but you know if you do pull back, <laughs> obviously the next time going forward, it's gonna be harder. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know <laughs> you just took uh, let's just take uh L nine here and his uh when I ran a test game for him and uh, another friend of ours, <laughs> <laughs> they was going into one of the mines regions, regions what we call the range. You know, blasting. They, they had people watching a piece of lamb. They just went in guns blasting. Da, 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 da. Now, if you know, after they won, they got into a car and had a whole uh, shootout while trying to get back home. And if they gave up at any point in time and lost a piece of lamb, they would now know that hey, we have someone who's actually looking for this. So obviously, we gotta hit them harder or actually attack them where they you know find out who they are and you know attack them. So now they put themselves in danger. So you can come back, but you know. They're not just gonna let that you know slide. Man, they came into my turf looking for my god, and I showed them why I pray. Rat a tat a tat a tat, motherfucker. And yes. <laughs> so, like I said, it's not going to be as dreadful, but you know that's also a thing to keep in mind. But the idea I do want to convey that yeah, these these are cybernetic nuns with guns. You want to go in. You want to hit them hard and hit them fast and look good doing it. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. <laughs> and uh, I've all, the joke I've always made make it, made is I've got a bullet with your name on it and I'm gonna keep shooting until I find it. Because <laughs> that's a good one. That is a good one. Because given given that because the. Since you are going with disciplines, I'm, ass I'm assuming that the skill system that was in Dames is going to return just not as many skills, since you're talking about this being Dames Light. Yes. The original had, uh, was it 24, I believe? So we're trying to decide right now. It was a multiple uh, of five. It was 25 in Dames. 25. Yeah, 25 in Dames. 
And right now, I'm thinking, right now, the working build we have of it has seven only. And it just covers like the basics, you know, uh, melee on uh, melee shooting, hacking, stealth, uh, and one called charity, but that's a working title. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, and speech, you know, just to uh, just get people into the the idea of the skills, not necessarily looking for the yeah. you know the crunch, because uh, apparently many people don't like crunch games because we you know send up we send up uh, notepad. Sand the Swamp Dog games, Grim Jim. If you you know heard about I them, I know him. I've had yep. I've had Jim on a few times. Yep, lots of great feedback, mm -hmm. but <laughs> lots of great feedback. But one of the things they said is like you know, games is uh, just just a bit much, and I'm just and I don't you I don't know if you ever seen our Fallout Crusher game, but if people say games is a bit much, they don't want Fallout. <laughs> Um, yeah. I always, I always take, I always take that kind of thing with a with a grain of salt because there's been this narrative going going around of um, crunch, bad, simplicity, good, and it's vi and um, it's all, it's almost, it's almost um, swinging the pendulum too far the other way when when um, the fact of the matter is, if it if would that I think a, I think a lot of people who will, who will do that. I think I think need to revisit the stuff that Fantasy Games Unlimited or a bunch of companies back in the '90s put put out to mm -hmm. really understand the horrors of too much crunch. That's and, the reason why I'm not. That's the reason why I didn't go that far. Yeah. And, and like the thing is too is like complexity bad, crunch good, complexity bad. Like keep in mind, I grew up on like 3.5. That, sh that shit was my bread and butter when I was getting into gaming. And I have some really great stories about that. And I, lo I love 3.5. Mm -hmm. I've been playing 5e with friends. With friends that I know are good GMs that I quite enjoy their GMing style. And I fucking hate it. I'm, I spend every time going, why am I here? And it's not because the GM is bad. It's not because the players are bad. Like These are people I play with on a regular fucking basis. I just cannot stand 5e. It is so simplistic. I'm sitting there going, what is the difference between my death cleric and the other guy's death cleric? There is none. Um, our spell list. That's the fucking difference. And I have I think I told you guys in the past, I do not care for the Vancean model when it comes to spell casting. Mm -hmm. Correct. I, ha I yes. haven't I haven't back in the day. I still I still don't. Because, because for because for one, when you have when you have a limited resource like that, you invite the rainy day paradox. Mm -hmm. You know, what if I can't use one of my ninety nine mega elixirs? What if I need it for later? He says at the final boss of the of the final encounter of the campaign. Yeah, yeah. and the other thing is not having a strong enough in universe justification. With spell drain, there's a justification. Using magic is going to tire you out. Mm -hmm. With the with the whole Vancian model, what's the what what is the reason why my character in universe has one? I know some people go implied setting like if it's not in the book, it doesn't count. Yeah. The only reason, the only real reason, being holdovers from chainmail and the creators being a fan of um. Of of the of Jack Vance's Dying Earth books, which I like those mm -hmm. books too. Funny thing is, even the Dying Earth RPG that Pelgrane put out doesn't even use that system. But yeah, would it be fair of me to say that the core attributes, you know, body coordination, perception, all all that, that isn't changing? That isn't changing. And that's correct. Um, are you guys still using a action point system? Uh yes, that that's that's gonna be our bread and butter for all our games essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, single action or major action, minor action, move action is a dumb system. <laughs> I want to do things. <laughs> I've always I've always had the attitude of that particular eco that particular economy of action can only really work when you're when you're using all three every round. But mm -hmm. if you're in if you're in melee. What reason do you have to use your move action? Well, especially in a Never. game like D and D, where you get punished for doing that because you get free opportunity attacks. And don't get me wrong, opportunity attacks are fucking amazing. 
But as a melee character, why should I make a movement action? Yeah. Unless you use the disengage action. Then you wish your action. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah that's, you that's the if point. If you disengage, well, you're, get, well um, you're now out of melee range. Yeah. So the, th the whole... Th if you're in melee range, you want to get in close and kick ass, but once you're in the middle of ass-kicking range... What pur what purpose do you have for that move action? That's just a, that's just a sink. So you're only doing your in those situations you're effectively only doing one action per round. Yeah. Oh. And the funny thing is, a, a good friend of mine, um, Tanner, the developer of Heavens and Heresies, originally had it that you could spend certain amounts of your mo of your movement for spe for specific actions based on your class. Mm -hmm. Eventually, he just cut out the middleman and did an AP system. <laughs> Just saying, like superiority right. for AP. Just saying. Oh, and hell, the the game that the game that I'm running on Saturdays, Emberwind uses uses a. Um, oh my AP. God! You play Emberwind? We not only do I play, I de I developed a pugilist class for Emberwind. Oh my God! You are my. I've been looking for people to play Emberwind with. Yeah, because I I play it. I did, I've <laughs> done. I did a deep dive with it. I've in, I've interviewed the creators and I've ha I've had plenty of back and forth when I was trying to figure out how to write a primer for my players because mm -hmm. with every, when any anytime I do a new campaign I always write like a primer that's like one or two pages that mm -hmm. goes into what we're playing some of the basic of the basic rules you know co core mechanics and all that what yeah. the tone is and most importantly what would be inspirational media. I'm I'm not going to lie. I mean, myself, Zay, and the others, we tried to go through a. Uh, uh, we we've been playing. We played some Emberwind. We we ended up purchasing it at Gen Con, not this past Gen Con, but the year before. So we we've we've had it for like a year and a and a, and a half for now, and we've played it a little bit here and there. And honestly, the combat's fucking phenomenal. I love it so much. Um, I'm this. I'm a hexer, I want to say. It's been forever since I looked at my character sheet, and I'm a slow Invoker. burn, but by the end of combat, I'm doing, like, insane damage, because I just... Um, oh, it's so good. Um, you're pro there's no there's no hexer um, class. You're probably playing Invoker. Um, Maybe. Because Invo um, Invoker is, I always describe as a, as a second-line caster that is more about di that is more about disabling. Um, I'm... I'm curses and hexes. Yeah, that's that's, that's invoker. Again, yeah, the, that's like I said, I haven't looked at this. Um, spiritualists but can my... do curses, though. Um, the thing I think it's invoker. The um, tricky thing with the classes in Emberwind is you with a with a lot of them, you can't really do a one to one with more popular um, RPG classes, mm -hmm. like the. I know some people might say, "Well, the art, the ardent's like a sorcerer, isn't it?" No, <laughs> not, the ardent really. is a blaster caster, but I yeah. wouldn't, cons I wouldn't um, compare it to a sorcerer because the big thing with the ardent is setting things on fire and yeah. taking advantage of things set on fire. It's it's a whole burn and be burned kind of system, and it synergizes with things being on fire. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I. Again, I it has been oh gosh, plus six months since we've last played. Um, one um, of my just players because we... pl plays an ardent, and his whole thing is set things on fire. So, and while they're on fire, everybody within range of who's on fire gets healed. Nice. <laughs> um. Um. But yeah, I want to say it's an invoker. It's I. Yeah. I'd have to look at my character sheet again, which mm -hmm. I am nowhere near at this point. Yeah. Um. It is. It is at my house, and I'm not at my house. Yeah. Uh. I ended up making a pugilist class for Emberwind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because while well, while well, because one, I'm a monk, so I got to work my gimmick. Mm -hmm. And while you can kind of do some monk stuff with the, um, spiritualist. Mm -hmm. Which is which I always described as be as being this weird mix of a Taoist priest and a Native American shaman, with mm -hmm. the with a little bit of classical necromancy. Not the 
in in so far as the way necromancy was used in antiquity where it was just another form of divination yeah um not the i command the dead kind of thing that everybody thinks it is no it was talk, talking to the dead to to um uh, to do divination instead of instead of using stones or reading the stars or anything like that yeah um but the other problem was the fantasy of the un of the unarmed master what was not really being fulfilled by any of the other classes and i i know some might say well just well just house rule that you're going barehanded while playing as warrior that do that doesn't work mm -hmm. Yeah, that that doesn't fill the fantasy. And I I've never I've never liked that whole thing of oh just reskin it, um. Because because some th some things you can do that, some things you can't. Since you brought up Five E, I will always pick on the fact that the DM's guide for Five E claimed claimed that you could do a samurai class by just reskinning the paladin. But that's not how samurai works. Exactly. Putting as putting aside that you'd have to deal with the half caster issue, um, the... like samurai was never a caster class. Yeah. And in, and in any and any other iteration, it's it's never been the. Back in the three E days, there was the good way to do samurai and the bad way. The mm. bad way was in complete warrior, where it seemed to focus on two we on two weapon fighting, which was weird. And then yeah. Oriental Adventures, which just had it as a slightly different fighter who just happened to get an ancestral weapon right out of the gate. Yeah. Um. But because of because of the fact that that fantasy wasn't fulfilled, I figured I'd try to fulfill it myself. And some of the stuff we ended up creating that was largely taken from the fourth edition monk was mm -hmm. broken. And. Though every class has one has one particular setup that could be considered busted, so I didn't think we were um, doing any doing anything out of the ordinary. We put yeah. we put we um put in an additional rule when it came to um wall banging. Basically, <laughs> because a lot of the a lot of the actions that we have set up um do forced movement on their targets. Yeah. And I didn't want to have a situation where force movement happens, but they hit a wall and then that's it. So yeah. the rule that we had was they take they, um, they take um d6 piercing damage per square that they would have moved. Oh, nice. Oh, um, you and... just lock a motherfucker in a corner and fucking uh, welcome to the cage match. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you still got to roll, and there's a chance of rolling nothing but ones. Um, Still, I made piercings I, oh, pretty I, fucking good. Though. I made a supplementary um, keepsake called Scroll of Rampart Smashing, which turns, which treats that D6 roll as if it as if it was crit damage, you know. So it's always <laughs> sixes. <laughs> um, but it, I didn't have I didn't have it. But um, other other enemies are treated as ju as just um. As, as just objects that that block, I'm not gonna do a three body collision kind of thing. Yeah. As fun as fun That's... as that would be, that it, that might be a bit much. The whole <laughs> idea is, you have you have crazy mobility and you push other people around. It's a human pinball machine. Yeah, and I mean with with how Emberwind tries to be with their AI system. Yeah. Um. Having you throw people into other people just honestly ruins the entire setup. Mm -hmm. So, so if if you if we we added that if you push some if you um, do that force movement and it hits another foe, it's just treated as if they hit a wall. Yeah, that that honestly makes sense. Um, and for balance reasons, like even if even if you're like, well, it it's like hitting a wall, but the damage is split equally. That is fucking way too broken. The reason oh. I didn't go with that is because th because I feel Emberwind is a game that works at its best when things are resolved um, smoothly, and yes. adding adding more dice adding more dice rolls or have or having to do division of dice rolls um, was adding an extra step that wasn't really going to add anything to make it worth it, so I didn't do it. Yeah, no, I agree with that honestly. Um. 
and now he's even now he's even worse because due to one of the features he, that my player who's been testing that class took, um, he hit he hits as if he has a range of a pole arm. <laughs> God with, damn! He hits with a range of a pole arm. One of his sustained things all, gives him gives gives him a free gives him free movement, <laughs> and whenever and whenever he, whenever ranged attacks miss him, he can teleport. <laughs> <laughs> It's like if we're gonna go full anime bullshit, let's go full anime bullshit. <laughs> but I'll probably end up sharing I, I the, sharing the document that that I had um, for that down down the road. But getting getting back to the heart of matters, mm -hmm. um, obviously with that with um, dames, you guys had a system for 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 um, standard defense as well as one for shields and ch and chances to block. Given mm -hmm. that firearms are taking a bigger precedent, is that kind of thing still there? Uh, sorta. The the equipment system is something that also got downscaled because this again is the going to be the light version of that system anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically, there's only going to be four armors: light, medium, heavy, and uh, power armor. And with shields, obviously, just going to be you know one type of shield. Yeah. Uh, so after that, it's just added on to their um, what's the word? DT, which is damage threshold, which subtracts from damage you take, mm -hmm. which is going to be taking its place, however, uh, of its original function, its cover, because um, you're going to need to be, if you're in cover, then it will be equal to our block chance in dames, uh, which if it rolls, um, and just a reminder if anyone didn't, you know, remember, uh, it combat's D100 base. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to roll, uh, above the dodge chance to hit. And so the cover will be adding onto the dodge chance. So if it gets into that low range, it will still hit the person, but it will take the uh, the DT from the cover and HP from the cover before it goes to you. Mm -hmm. Which that's that certainly makes sense. And obviously one of the other th one of the other things that's going to be pretty prevalent when with things that are cyberpunk adjacent is customization of equipment. Now, since since you're simplifying the weapon setup are you having it are you having it set up that you can um put in extra custom effects on your weapons oh yeah we always have those um even in danes which is a fancy game we still have mods quote unquote for weapons mm -hmm. um it, whatever it, at that point would be like custom hilt sharpening bleeding damage serration stuff like that uh weighted um while in our previous game fallout questro <laughs> Mod galore, yeah. It's gonna be very much you know toned down from that, obviously. Um, but yes, we still gonna have mods, sights, laser focus pointers, uh, mm -hmm. energy weapons, stuff like that. Probably, probably the the same the, the same kind of craziness that I see people like Yosho and Sam Claymore do every few weeks whenever they put out a cursed gun build for for whatever COD game they happen to be playing that day. Uh, people will definitely do that. Um, whatever we want to or not, so I, I won't say anything. And that's just including just us for the guns. That's not even saying anything about their sight next they have on top of yeah, it. Because there, there's always there's always going to be somebody who makes who tries to make the most cursed build that they can that they can possibly make. Um, where you where you have where you have say the. A um a very short a very shortened barrel on 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 an, on an assault rifle no stock and the and the big and a drum mag with a scope that is way too big for that so you have recoil out the wazoo. Yeah, because I play fine players especially it's like oh well you see uh like the saw off function in Fallout Question says oh you can saw off anything that's considered a rifle. And you said, oh, and we obviously meant for, like, shotguns, because shotguns are under the rifle category. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, right. So this anti-material rifle, right? I could saw that off, and it would be considered con concealable, or whatever the fuck we had it for. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, but l let's see how this works. What do you want to do? And, you know, it, it'll be like that, for, at least for me. Um, I've grown since those years, but <laughs> I still like the adventurous spirit of players. And if, of, although, um, Escape from Tarkov is even worse when it comes to finding the most cursed setup with firearms. 
you know, where somebody decides to put razors on top of razors, so you've got a tower of razors on an a on a um <laughs> on an AR. Yeah. I think, Listen, there's, I think two... there's even a um su a subreddit just dedicated to f making the most cursed builds. Yeah, but hey, that's what players want to do. Yeah, and and I mean, to be fair though, when you have a system that allows that, I mean. I'm not saying that is the best balance ever, but when you have a system that inspires that kind of creativity, it really kind of helps find the gem of the system. Uh, the amount of times I've had conversations with people, like whether it was about Fallout Equestria or Dames or other systems, like my favorite, my favorite spell school in almost any single game is always illusion magic. Because if you're creative, it is the most crippling magic yeah and uh, and everyone give... always goes illusions are basic and they're boring and they don't do anything and that's because you are a boring person and don't know how to apply this kind of stuff apparently nobody's ever been to nobody's ever been to a magic show in vegas <laughs> mm -hmm. well freaking in fallout equestria i made a character who who's who took a martial art specialized in trip attempts and knocking people over and she was an illusion mage, and her whole shtick was just screwing with all of your five senses so you never knew which way was up. Um, two, I will note two things. One, the, mo the, most dangerous of Thor oh, the most dangerous of Thor's rogues gallery are illusionists, whether that be mm -hmm. Allura the Enchantress or Loki. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, two, I ended up making a illu an illusion specialist once in... Um, I think, I think it was I think it was Besom, and the <laughs> the the argument that I wanted to make is I is because this was a part of a challenge where I had to make a offensive illusionist. The way that I did it is that they is that they had a spe they had a fireball like spell that they lobbed like a grenade that was called a data bomb. Oh no! I see where this is going. What it do what it do what it does is it doesn't actually do any damage, but it is just a just this massive assault of sensory information on anybody that they end up experiencing synesthesia for about fifteen seconds. Man, it is a full on fucking sensory overload. Yeah. Oh, that is so mean. <laughs> This is the it technically counts as offense. It doesn't do it does it on itself doesn't do any damage, but you know, somebody might have to somebody might have to roll to see if they um lose their lunch or ju or just tripping balls. <laughs> we need to play a game together, my man. <laughs> Mysteriously. Um, but it like Zay? Mm -hmm. I'm putting forward a motion. I don't care if it's Dames, Fallout Equestria, or some other fucking system. We need an illusionist-only game. Me, Mildra, and a couple other people <laughs> who we know are going to make you absolutely livid. <laughs> but mm. um, if you guys want an example of what I mean with cur <laughs> with um, cursed affairs in Tarkov, I will send you the following image of the of a very cursed Saiga. Oh I want you to see God. if you can figure out what's wrong with this thing. This is cursed. Yes, it is. It has two scopes. Three scopes. Um... No, it, only ha it only has one, but here... It, ha well, it, it only has one scope, the giant one up top. No, oh, but inside okay. of it's a uh... <laughs> yeah. Inside it, ha inside it's got it. Ha it has it. The the UTG yeah. and the Palad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It has. Oh no, and the and the the, vid the vidyards. Yeah. Um. Uh, but the, yeah. But here's here's the big problem. Saiga Nine is a um shotgun. It's a semi-auto <laughs> shotgun. Yeah. Somebody said we want an AK, but we wanted to do tw we wanted to do twelve gauge. <sighs> Okay, te okay, technically not technically nine gauge, but it's basically it's it's a semi-automatic shotgun. Why do, yeah. why do you need a big ass scope for a semi-automatic shotgun? Why not? Because 
Fuck you. No, so I, don't... I love how it's still a seven mo. Uh, sorry, an almost eight moa rifle. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's the real but curse. Still. <laughs> the fuck am I looking at? Fucking FM scar with like four fucking. <laughs> Spot. Oh my god! I think you should. I think it's got that's... a fucking sniper handle on it. Um, oh, the ergonomic grip. Fucking three goddamn flashlights. Holy shit! Four. Actually, no, five. Five flashlights. <laughs> oh, they must be on the. They're on the other side, then, aren't they? I don't know. If you gave this to Ellen Wake, the game would probably be five minutes long. <laughs> But, you know, I do approve. And a lot of guns here. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of people will a lot of people will will say the most that the that the most ridiculous thing would be um light will be something like lightsaber nunchucks or or something like that. I'm saying that's pedestrian. Um go with the old favorite, rocket propelled chainsaw. Yes. I agree. Oh, or go, or I think I I had I've I think I told you guys about the up button in the past. I think so. Th that was the one that sent uh, anti gravity that sent them flying forward, flying uh, forward. Up. up. Yep. Yeah. And how that thing ended up crushing a dragon because it was in a cave lined with adamantite. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, literal unstoppable force and immovable object. Hilarity. Oh, that's amazing. Not not for the rest of the party because they had to watch a dragon. They had to watch and listen to a dragon get crushed to death, like it as if they as if it was a car in a compactor. <laughs> to be fair, it's better than the bard sexing it. This is true. Uh, <laughs> I did. I did the. I did the worst thing. I did the worst thing possible when I, when I said everybody, because for that camp, for for one of my campaigns, everybody had a cursed item. Um, the bard had a chastity belt <laughs> with a magically locked with a, a magic lock on it. You could you couldn't just ca you couldn't just cast knock on the on the thing to open it. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> The poor horny bard. Yeah, because I, f I figured that I figured that it, like what's the worst punishment I can put on the bard? Well, they can't. Well, they can't get any blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I would have given him the blue balls of impotence, and uh, they bound with him. They bind on pickup, and um, yeah, he's just always got erectile dysfunction. And it's just a bottle of fucking Viagra. Tempting, but I des I decided to go with that so I could get away with a Men in Tights joke. I mean, okay, that's fair. <laughs> um, I, I can respect that. Because I have a screwed up sense of humor. I mean, then again, all of, all of us do. It's just mm. none of us are more willing to admit, are willing to admit it. We are all mad here. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> But now, given given that, uh, there were there were quite a few disciplines in dames, and I'm guessing there's going to be less, but more, uh, more options with it, more um ways to customize within the disciplines, or is it go or is it just going to be a smaller pool of disciplines? It's a small pool of disciplines. They are uh, 24. Mm -hmm. uh, was it working as opposed to the uh... Oh man, I don't remember. Um, it's like close to a hundred. We've got like twenty plus disciplines mm -hmm. per school in dames. Yeah. Um, I remember. I remember us going that and deciding on twenty per. Just like we have like twenty spells per spell school mm -hmm. in dames, because yeah. choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the the way to customize that beyond that was you know originally the the talent system which allows you basically pick a uh, a feat uh, along with the skill perks that allows you to get a free 
perk that unlocked, let's say you got like uh, free points in your un unarmed, which unlocked, oh, you got like a shining fist attack, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the, that's what from, from Dames that uh, was to make to make your build a bit different than someone else choosing, uh, let's just say the warrior from the uh, first one. Uh, mm -hmm. This one, we have the, uh, the 24 in here. And they're not going to be the same as Danes. They're going to be their own custom-made uh, disciplines for Daughters of Lamb specifically because we got guns. We, we got to switch it up a bit. And it's more thematic as opposed to just uh, you're you are an adventurer in a high fantasy setting. Yeah. You're In this one, you're you're nuns in a uh, sci-fi sci -fi dystopian, in question marks, world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Post-cataclysm. Post okay, now accident. now I gotta now give since we're dealing with that, I have to ask one dumb question. Could dumb answer. could I'm could somebody make a could somebody make a build that is a legally distinct version of the Grammaton cleric from Equilibrium? Remind I actually have no idea what that is. The that was that that was the intro that was the introduction of the the concept of gun kata this idea of being able to predict oh the that guy yeah oh uh, I mean the film itself I I liked it apparently a lot of people didn't but that concept of the of this dual wielding pistol person who just who just seems to have an in, an innate sense for um, where people are positioned and is a is able to get the drop on them because of that oh uh, was a was a fascinating experience. But to answer your question, yes, of uh, several things they could probably do for it, because we already have dual wielding just as a rule. It's not really a class. There are class that's well classes. There are disciplines that make it easier for you. Um, but everyone can quote unquote just dual wield as as they start, mm -hmm. right? Uh, well, if they so choose, right? It just then it has a bigger difficulty in doing so. But yes, they can definitely be able to get uh, cybernetics, the actual discipline, to allow better dual wielding, mm -hmm. and just straight up kick someone's ass normally. Yeah, uh, which is also why I like you know how we you know usually make games because it's very free form, but mm -hmm. you're. You, you, it, we we are able to definitely make the skeleton of whatever you so wish, and then by you choosing what else to make the meat and bones. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. the meat and uh, muscle of it. Yeah. Um, obviously in Dames you had the body part traits um aspect of character creation where you, there were certain traits that you would account for based on the type of demi human you were. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Daughters of Lamb because of the um streamlining and because of the subject matter, you're going to be mostly doing humanoids. So is is that is that body part trait thing moved over into um, accounting for cybernetics or is that is that thing just um excised? No, it's still there. Uh, what happens is for, from with it, we took out the the body section builder because mm -hmm. obviously you're all human, you don't need it anymore. But we kept the miscellaneous traits, mm -hmm. uh, which allowed you to actually personalize what you actually are, like old, young, uh, acid resistant stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, what cybernetics will be a added thing on top of it. Yeah, and since there's a big, since there's going to be a bigger emphasis on firearms, I'm, I am curious if you get if you guys are going to be, um, using tracked ammunition or if that's not, if that's not going to be a thing. Uh, this came up, um, and I'm ex right now experimenting with not using the, you know, you you track your bullets ammunition types. Um. Uh, because apparently people just don't like it, which I can see why. But at the same point in time, it's either you track it or you don't care about it. So, what, so, so should I even have it? You know. So I'm trying to gauge that as we're personally. Going I, th right I now. like the um, I like the usage die that's in the black hack. Uh, we're actually using a usage die right now to see if it works, and I'm just seeing how people think about it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a nice little middle ground because tracking tracking each individual bullet or each individual clip is um is all right if you were dealing with just standard ammo, but 
once you start bringing in specialized ammo, which I'm pretty sure is going to happen, then things get a bit tricky. By, like, specialized ammo, do you mean, like, I have 5.56 five, and I can have hollow point versus tracer versus explosive? Or do you mean, like, 5.56 five, versus 12 gauge versus 9 mil? More, more of the former. Okay. With that, I can kind of understand and agree. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. especially especially since I do think that I do think that um, what once you're dealing with a limited resource, there's the temp there's that temptation of playing defensive. Um, and I get the feeling that you guys you guys want um fights that are more more akin to like the tea house scene in hard boiled. Yes. Yeah. We definitely want you to use what you you would you have. Mm -hmm. Cuz cuz Lord knows your opponent's well. Mm -hmm. And oh, well, lamb knows. The <laughs> yeah. the tea, and the reason why I bring up the tea house is because that in that particular scene the whole place is just getting trashed with all, with all the bullets going everywhere. Definitely. And, and oh, just so you know, just just because you are a part of an abbey and you are nuns, you are don't have to be good. Yeah, you're <laughs> not locked into being lawful good. Lamb is just a true neutral god. Fuck them. Get me my stuff. Mm -hmm. And well, I, I can't. I kind of figured that because you because I got the sense that you guys don't really care for the the. Alignments, the alignment grid as it's t as it's typically used. Man, that is a contentious topic here. Uh, two, <laughs> we we don't. Uh, we just say what what do you want to play? So and yeah. we just go from there. <laughs> I've yeah. always are, are you a dick? All right, let's see if I can work that. <laughs> are you this evil? And the, and the thing is, we. I'm oh, sorry. I've always held the attitude that when it was just what side of the cosmos likes you or hates you. It's fine. When it became a morality system, it was put in something it wasn't meant for. Well, my I think my worst issue with like and don't get me wrong, I think I think the alignment grid is not bad as a stepping stool for where your characters start. There's a lot in terms of like I'm I'm very big on like character development and playing as your character and you know I think the alignment chart can really help with that in some cases. The problem is, is I don't like people misunderstand the law, uh, the alignment chart. Okay, yeah, you got good, neutral, evil, and then you got lawful, neutral, chaotic. Everyone always fucking misinterprets the lawful. Like everyone misinterprets the lawful versus the chaotic side of things. The good, evil, neutral. That's fucking easy as shit because it just rolls off of what we as a society understand as good evil and neutral but like everyone always goes oh well you're lawful you have to follow the law no i don't lawful means you follow a creed or a code of ethics that's all that fucking means if my god says slavery is an abhorment then to follow the law of the land that says slavery is good is to break my fucking oath um and people always fucking mix that shit up. And then they always use chaotic as an excuse to be that guy. LOL random. And that's not what chaotic means. Yes, chaotic can sometimes... Yes, you know what? Chaotic chaotic evil is very akin to ADHD. But it's not LOL random. It's just... I do me. And that's it. There is, there is no code of ethics I follow, even if I don't like it. You know, like, oh, I am a paladin of X. So, you know what? I'm a paladin of the god of the law, which means I have to follow the laws of the land. So even though I fucking hate slavery, since it's legal here, I have to respect that. Mm -hmm. That would be lawful. And then you use the laws of the lands to get, you know, reform and get slavery annulled in a legal process. That would be lawful good. Um chaotic would be like well i don't fucking like slavery so fuck it we're just gonna either buy a bunch of slaves because that's easier or i'm just gonna fucking free him mm -hmm. and cause a revolt and now we have a kingdom of slaves right <laughs> um, ex-slaves yeah ex-slaves i do what i want not because 
LOL random, but because that's what I want. Like, I don't know. It's it's hard to fucking explain, uh, which makes it even harder to fucking play. Yeah. And I'm also fucking, like, half drunk at this point. I'm like, f- four, five beers in? Five beers in. Yeah. I always find that players, even if they say their character is coded to say <laughs> lawful good or lawful <laughs> whatever, uh, <laughs> Just give them one situation where they can unleash the beast, as it were. And you'll oh. be like, you're what? <laughs> so I, I just don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't... We don't... And they would great... never re- reflect on it. <laughs> no. They're, they're good when you're talking outside of the system to characters. They're not good as a part of the system. Mm-hmm. And because... Oh, yeah. good. No, no, no. I'm just drunk and rambling. Yeah. The, but, and of course, of course, you did, I don't think, I obviously haven't looked at Fallout Equestria in detail. From what I saw in Dames, I did not see anything that would imply alignment, and I'm pretty sure that's not going to be changing here. No, for Uh, Dames, the, the goal of you is, at the end of the day, you are becoming a Dame. That is your goal as an adventurer. How you get there, up to you. The only thing that's holding you back, probably morale-wise, is that the person who has to give you damehood is the king, who is human. So if you do anything against humans, you know, publicly, you 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 won't become dame. Mm-hmm. However, behind the scenes, they don't even know about that. But that's up to you. Yeah. yeah, and and I mean, even then, with some of the like, you know, full. Level one, you know, start to end game campaigns that were in the middle of the running, like there are alternatives to quote unquote damehood. You hit level ten, you get your damehood, blah blah blah. But instead of being knighted by the king of the human realm, you are, you know, you become the left hand of the patriarch or the fucking uh, the kraken queen. You, you know, or the yeah, the Kraken Queen's main hit squad. Like you become the trusted confidant of the big bad evil guy. That would be the fucking alternative, and it's equivalent. You know, mechanically, it's completely equivalent to, to being damned, um, to being knighted a dame. It's just now you're an evil person. Mm-hmm. And that then... being said, we hope to write our, or we hope to write our villains to the point where they're ambiguously gray. There is a right and wrong answer, but damn, they be spitting. <laughs> yeah, and as a lamb, similar to the the dames, you are just trying to find lamb. How you do that is just between you and your uh, Abby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, since we're dealing with something cyberpunk adjacent, I do want to ask if you have an equivalent to hacking. Uh, it is literally just a skill. We don't do a mini game for it. It is you roll, you meet number, you hack the thing. Mm-hmm. And speaking of skills, are you go are you going with a are you going with the sa- with the same skill list or are you going with a simplified skill list? Simplified, uh, we have melee, unarmed, which are, is one skill. Infiltration, ranged weapons, mechanics, speech, hacking slash matrix, which is one skill, and uh, charity, which is the seventh skill that we're working on. What that actually would do besides get you money. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's the style skill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should flame it that way. Not completely sure yet. We gotta run it for the play testers, but you know. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. And with that said, what are you guys shooting for as far as a page count for the project? Uh, for my demo document right now, uh, with just some uh, base mechanics, pictures, lore, it has about like eighty free pictures. So it's gonna be a small document, maybe a hundred at most. Mm-hmm. And do you guys plan on putting like a quick out a um quick start or or something before the full release? Uh for this one, it's actually going to be a free release. Well, uh, that's what I plan to do and pay what you want, Dave. Um, so it once it's you know fixed out, it's essentially the most quick start you're going to get because it is like I said, Dame's light. Um, so yeah. it is the light version of Dame's. So mm-hmm. yeah, it is. It is a pay what you want, um, almost donationware type deal. Um, so, like, yeah, there's not going to be a quick rules, because, again, like Zay was saying, this this is the quick rules to dames. Mm-hmm. 
that cer that certainly makes sense. But and and I will certainly appre I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it develops uh, when the time comes. Mm -hmm. But. With that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way back to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. Anytime. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Should I have been at six beers? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's up to you. And of course, that is indeed what I heard. <laughs> a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!